Good morning to the Commonwealth. This is Young Honey with Raw Dog Radio, bringing you the greatest old-time radio station since the bombs fell. We're going to be hitting you with an arrangement of ragtime on a bridge stories and other old world medias. I'd like to send a specific thank you to publicdomainreview.org and archive.org for organizing and compiling all of this media. Now, without further commentary, we're starting off with Frontier Gentlemen, a late 1950 story collection by John Denton. Which in English means gentle virtue. This is her story. Frontier Gentlemen. Herewith, an Englishman's account of life and death in the West. As a reporter for the London Times, he writes his colorful and unusual stories. But as a man with a gun, he lives and becomes a part of the violent years in the new territories. In just one minute, we will bring you this latest report from the Frontier Gentleman. Hey, what do you think of my new swept wing 58 Dodge, journey? Ain't she a beaut? Boy, that's really a big car. Big? I'll say she's big. I'll stay here by the grill and you go take a look at those swept wing fins at the rear. Okay. Come on back by the door. I'll show you the inside. Okay. Now look inside. Wow, this job is big inside. Look, look how, how wide, wide the, the seats, seats are. are. Who are those people in here? The neighbors. The neighbors. I'm charging them a dollar an hour to sit there. Come on. Wow, you really got a lot of car here. And with all this, Dodge is priced below 59 different models of the low price field. Hey, you want to go for a ride? Let me sit down a minute. I'm exhausted. Now, starring John Daner, this is the story of J.B. Kendall, Frontier Gentleman. In Montana Territory, there is a mining town which has been known variously as Cottonwood, Spanish Forks, and La Barge. Now it is simply called Deer Lodge. I had stopped there on my way back to Fort Benton, and it was in Deer Lodge that I was for the first time introduced to the card game of poker. It all began innocently enough after I struck up a friendship with Billy Moore, a prospector whose claim lay a few miles from town. Uh, you might call me kind of a cross between a river sniper and a desert rat. River sniper's what I am here, gold panning like this. Of course, my diggings is back there on the hill. But I ain't hit nothing much yet. Stream's not bad, though. Keeps me going. It's a lonely job, I imagine. Sometimes. You ever think of settling down? Getting married? Sure. Sure, when I strike it big, I may do that. Meantime, there's Deer Lodge close by. Don't get time to be lonesome there. <laughs> I haven't noticed you're much of a drinking man. Oh, I ain't. But there's always a card game. Pharaoh, three-card Marty, poker. Poker's my game. Nothing I like more than a night or two of poker. Do you win? Not much. Stay about even, mostly. How about you? Uh, never played the game in my life. You never played poker? <laughs> no. Well, boy, we sure got to do something about that. Do you think it's absolutely necessary? Well, Mr. Kendall, how are you going to write about how people live in these parts if you ain't never played poker? Oh, well, I never quite thought of it in that way. Well, it's a fact. I'll tell you what. Uh, this afternoon, I'll show you how to play. There's nothing to it. And then tonight, we'll go into town. There's always a real friendly game at Dead Broke Bar. That evening, we rode back into Deer Lodge. Billy had pronounced me an able student, and that with caution, I might even add a dollar or two to my diminishing funds. 
I had promised to limit myself to play with $50 and no more. When we arrived at the bar, Billy led me to a table in the back room. Two men were there. One, a meek-looking fellow whose expression was one of constant hurt surprise. The other was a lanky, dark-faced chap. Billy introduced us. This here is J.B. Candle, boy. Turkey Johnson and Neil Deggers. How do you do, gentlemen? Candle's a newspaper fellow from England, writes for the London Times, out here looking this over. Give us some chips, Turkey. How's it going, Billy? Any pay dirt? Oh, about the same. I ain't complaining. What about you? I'm going to give it another week, and I'm pulling up stakes. You, Turkey? Look, you want to play or talk? Turkey ain't in the mining business right now, Ken. Oh, I see. Trying to get a stake play in poker. The trouble is he keeps on losing. You feel lucky tonight, Turkey? And one of these days you're going to get lead poison if you don't shut your mouth. <laughs> nice friendly cuss, ain't he? Uh, them blue chips is worth $5, Kendall. The uh, red's two, the white's one. Uh, High card deals. King, Jack, eight, four. Your deal, Kendall. Hmm? Oh, oh, yes. Roll the cards, boy. Uh, five? Five. Uh. Oh, now, wait a minute. Uh, something the matter? In these parts, we cut the cards, mister. He's kind of... Oh, I'm... He don't mean no harm. Sorry. I'll cut them. Roll them around, kid. Never did cut the plane with a greenhorn. Sorry. Oh, just deal, mister. Dollar. Call. Raise a dollar. No, thank you. Not for me, neither. I got a feeling you're telling a windy turkey. I'll see you. Give me three cards, Kendall. I'll take two. Billy won the first hand and the second. I played very carefully. And at the end of an hour, it was about $5 to the good. I could see that Turkey Johnson resented both me and my playing, even more so because he was losing. His temper slowly deteriorated with the quality of his cards. Then the door opened, and a small, pigtailed Chinese gentleman walked in. He had an ageless face, impassive. Oh, hey, see you. Oh, it'll I didn't think you'd be coming tonight. Light and rest your saddle. Uh, this is J.B. Candle, you. He's from England. Mr. Candle, I am honored. Uh, is it uh, Mr. You? Yes. How do you do, sir? Uh, good evening, Mr. Deggers. Mr. Amen. Johnson. Right, come on, come on, come on. Come on, more. It's your deal. I know it. Well, deal. Chips, please, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Fifty dollars. You keeps a string of burrows. Sells them or rents them. Orneriest critters you ever see. Uh -huh. oh, oh, very intelligent. Very noble animals. How is that? Pretty girl of yours, will you? Ain't seen her around. He keeps her hid from the likes of us, huh, you? You ought to see her, Candle. Real nice little filly. Is your daughter, Mr. You? Oh, no daughter, no. She's a girl from Hong Kong. She helps me with business. Talk, talk, talk. It's your play, Candle. I'll open for a dollar. <laughs> Mr. You proved to be an astute, but unlucky player, and Johnson began to win. For the next two hours, the game seesawed back and forth, and after that, it became obvious that unless there was a startling change, the big winner would be Johnson. The loser, Mr. Yu. Billy, Neil Deggers, and myself were about even. Then an extraordinary thing happened. I found myself at the end of a draw, sitting with three aces and two queens. The betting was up to Neil Deggers. At that time, there was $50 on the table. Two. No, I'm folding. Two, and I raise three. <laughs> yeah. Hey, this is a big one, huh? <laughs> All right, boys. I'm calling and raising five of my own. <laughs> mm. You take it easy, Candle. Shut your mouth, Moore. Ain't no side play in this game. Now, don't get riled, Turkey. Riled. Just keep your mouth shut. I'm sorry, gentlemen. Just give me a moment. Very well. I'll call. Ten dollars. 
Kendall, you know it's going to be a pleasure to make you holler calf rope. <laughs> Ain't going to be no beginner's luck in this game. Your play, Mr. You. Uh, and 25. <laughs> sure am glad I'm out of this one. You're 25 and up 25. Hey, Kendall, you better get out. Son of a gun, I'm saying for the last time more, you shut your mouth. Now listen, Turkey, he's a friend of mine. Mr. Johnson's, he's quite right, Billy. I'd like to buy some more chips, please. A hundred. Well, what's your play, mister? It'll cost you fifty. You better not... Fifty. Man, you ain't gonna have enough left to dust your fiddle. Fifty and raise fifty. What? There's near three hundred in here. Yeah, so there is. <laughs> I got the dead wood on you, boys, but you keep her getting fat. I ain't grumbling. <laughs> You're fifty, you and my fifty. Another hundred candle. Yes. I see. All right. I call. <laughs> Mr. Taki, there is five hundred dollars. I am now without money. Still, I wish to call you back. Oh, oh that's too bad. Maybe you can get a loan, huh? <laughs> I no take a loan. Well, what do you say, you? You in or out? Oh, how about them burrs? You want to stake them, huh? No, not burrs. But uh, maybe Kane Shoki? <laughs> I now ain't that southern. <laughs> you kidding? The girl should be worth another hundred. I seen a turkey. She's a looker. If you lose, can you guarantee I get her? I guarantee. Well, how can you do that, Mr. Yu? She belongs me. I paid a half a cent from China. <laughs> you wait, please. I put cards down. Nobody touch. <laughs> what you got, Turkey? Head's going to make all you happy as a duck in Arizona. <laughs> What's the matter, Kendall? Is game too rich for you, huh? <laughs> no, not at all. I find it very interesting. Well, boys... My luck has turned. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to get me a grub steak with the winnings and have me a real nice score to take care of grub slinging and the like. <laughs> say, say, how about me and you going farting? It? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> might do that, niggas. <laughs> yeah, might at that. At that moment, the door opened, and Mr. Yu came in, followed by the girl, Chen Shuk Yi. She must have been in her early 20s, and she was quite beautiful. She didn't look at any of us, but moved behind Mr. Yu's chair, staring black-eyed, expressionless. You tell her what happens if you lose? He has been told. You betting her? Yes, I call you bet with Shook Yi. All right. What do you got? Flush. Hot. <laughs> Oh, I had you figured. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah, kings and tenors full. <laughs> Just a moment. Mr. Johnson. Aces and ladies, fool. Son of a god. You have won, Mr. Kendall. The money and the girl are yours. Most honored to meet you, Mr. Kendall. Shuki's belongings are at my house. Do you wish her to bring them now? Well, I... I understand it is a matter of delicacy. You live at the hotel, Mr. Kendall? Uh, no, I'm staying with Billy Moore. Uh... Her belongings will be brought tomorrow. Most happy gentlemen, good night. Um, I, I'll cash these in if you don't mind, Mr. Johnson. $565. Oh, that was pretty smart, Moore. Pulling in a grifter to clean us out. Oh, now, just a minute, Turkey. Are you suggesting by any chance that I'm a cheat, Mr. Johnson? Well, I'm saying there was more than luck in your deal. You're saying I cheated? Here's your money. Come on, Deggers. <laughs> Never thought I'd see it. Turkey Johnson backing down. You sure got his number, Kent. Hey. Uh, what about her? I've been wondering. Um, Shook ye... Yes, master? No, no, not master. I'm Kendall. Kendall. I think you'd better go back to Mr. Yu's house now. Oh, no. 
Me beloved candle now. Mr. You, not take your key back. <laughs> I not go back. <laughs> it ain't gonna do no good, Candle. He wouldn't have her back. Old You's got a lot of pride. He lost her fair and square. She's yours. But I can't. What the devil am I going to do with her? Well, now... A good cook. Men clothes. Very good. Yeah, good enough for me. Girl. Billy, we'll have to put her up in your shack until I can think of what to do with her. Well, that's fine with me, Candle. That's just fine. You and I will sleep outside. Well, now, hold on, boy. I don't mind giving up my bunk. I can sleep on the floor, but there ain't no sense in freezing to death, maybe getting the rheumatics or the heaves. Well, perhaps she could stay at the hotel. I'd get her a room. Ain't room for a skinny tick in there this time of night. All right, then it's got to be your place. Come on. Kind of nice night, ain't it, Kendall? Uh, yes. Stars sure do look pretty. You comfortable, Shuki? Very comfortable. Very nice. Thank you, Kendall. How long have you been over here? Four years. What made you come? I was slave girl. Mr. You send to buy me. I come. Oh. I like you better. I'd be good slave to you. No. A slave is not a good thing, Shuki. No one should be slave. In this country, no slaves. Do you understand? No. If I no slave, what I do? Well, what did you do in China? Slave. Very rich gentleman. Lots of slaves. But he get dry gulch by other rich gentlemen. Then I his slave. Then second rich gentleman sell me to Mr. Yu. He sell many slaves come to America. Now I you slave. <laughs> no, I don't want a slave. Then why you buy me? I didn't. I won you in the poker game. If you lost, you would have paid money? Yes. Then you see, it is same. I am glad I not be won by that no good son of gun, Turkey Johnson. <laughs> she sure got him, Peg. <laughs> you shouldn't say that, Shuki. Bad words. I hear many people say so. I no like the way he look at me, son of gun. Oh. Oh. Here, Shuki, I'll help you. I'll get the horses fed and watered. You want to show her where to sleep? All right. Your house? No, it's Billy's. Oh, he very rich man. Mister, you not have wood floor. You sleep here on this bunk, Shuki. Where you sleep? Outside with Billy. I sleep on floor. You sleep on bunk. No, no. I'm going out to help Billy now. You go to bed. If the master wills it. I will it. Good night. Billy. Yeah. She bedded down. It's on the way. Look, this is nothing to laugh at, Billy. What am I going to do with her? <laughs> She's your slave. You figure it out. I mean it. I can't go traveling about with her. <laughs> I wouldn't mind it. Billy, it's serious. Do you think if I have a talk with Mr. Yule... I, I told you, it's no good. Now, you boys stand right there. Don't turn around or I'll blow your innards out. Turkey Johnson. I right, take the guns off of him. Sure, Turkey, Sure. All right. Now you got my money, Kendall. You throw it behind you real easy like. <laughs> All right, pick it up, Deggers. Now you go and fetch a gal out. Sure, Deggers. I'd advise you to keep your hands off her, Johnson. Well, get going, Deggers. You ain't advising nothing, Kendall. I'm going to get you, Turkey. You stretch him for this. Why, you got me scared, plumb to death. Hey, Turkey! Get in there! What do you mean, Shades? Uh... Must have heard us going out through the window. Well, find her. Well, dark. All right, all right. Forget the gal. Let's tail out of here. So long, boys. Thanks for the grub steak. <laughs> I'm going to get the Wait horse. Wait a minute. No, there's no sense without a gun. I should have known. And low down. Shook ye. No good. Shook ye. It's Kendall. They've gone. Where are you? Master. You got another gun, Billy? Yeah, yeah, in the shack, a rifle and a coat. I heard voice of son of gun Turkey Johnson. I go out the window. Yes, yeah, very sensible. You stay here with Shook Ye, Billy. I'm going after them. Well, I'll come too. No, you better stay in case they double back. Lock yourselves in. 
Sure I will, Kendall, sure. Don't you worry about a thing. I left Billy the rifle, took the coat, and rode after Johnson and Beggars. I hoped they'd make for Deer Lodge, which is exactly what they did do. I found them in the least likely, but I suppose most likely place for a man like Johnson, the Dead Broke Bar. They were celebrating, standing drinks to everybody in the place. Turkey. Oh, don't bother me, boy. Yeah, but... <laughs> Turn around, Mr. Johnson. <laughs> well, if it ain't Lord Kendall. <laughs> what do you say, Your Honor? <laughs> All right, come on, have a drink. <laughs> Not with my own money, thanks. Hand it over like a good fellow. Are you loco, mister? Your money? Well, I cleaned you out. Ain't that right, Deggers? Sure, sure. Dead right, Turkey. An unfortunate choice of words. I say you're dead wrong. But either way, unless you give it back, you'll most certainly be dead. I'm getting out of here. Here, me too. <laughs> Draw first. Uh, no shooting in the bar, boys. You take it outside. Well, you want to <laughs> draw first? I have. Well, uh, well, <laughs> hey, I, 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 I was only kidding. <laughs> I'm not. Throw your gun belt on the bar. You too, Deggers. Now, Johnson, I have taken a great dislike to your face. Hold this for me, will you, Barkeep? Get him, Douglas! Get him! Get him! Get him! Billy! It's me, Kendall. Here's your guns. Oh. Hello, Shooky. Hello. Well, what's the matter? Kendall, I hope you don't take this wrong, but I'd kind of... Well, I'd kind of like to buy Shukye from you. What? Well, you see, me and her, we had a little talk while you was gone, and, and, and she takes to me, sort of, and I thought maybe if I married her... He's strange man, Kendall. You tell me to him. He wants to marry. Well, do you want to marry him? I like. The next morning, I was best man at their wedding, and Mr. Yu gave Shook Yi away. After the breakfast, which took place at the Dead Broke Bar, I started off for Fort Benton where I plan to take the river steamer down the Missouri to write my reports of another part of the West. Frontier Gentlemen was written, produced, and directed by Anthony Ellis and stars John Daner as J.B. Kendall. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Vic Perrin, Jack Crucian, Ben Wright, and Charlie Lung. Music was composed and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. Join us again next week for another report from the Frontier Gentlemen. John Wall speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>